Muller 7 on the leaderboard. Kazu, 14. Both in the top 16. Right. Good spot that, to be. Yeah, it's the first round of the tournament for both players. Yep. Oh, is it the one? No, Kazu gets him with the six. We don't normally come in in time for the die roll. Get that drama right there. What a confident roll. Barely squeaks it out. How do you feel about it when you roll a three, and then I pick up your two dice, and I just roll one die? Do you feel, am, I, am I rubbing it in? Hey, if you if, if you care about the die roll that much, you know, it's I think somebody a, a psych should, out play. Somebody should try to rub you the wrong way if you're All invested right. in things like that. <laughs> you, you, you deserve to feel bad. I, just, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I just, every every swing, no matter how big it is, I'm feeling it. What's the line of luck is probability taken personally? You, you, sometimes oh, you ooh, lose That's a great rolls. quote. Yeah. I didn't, I've never I, heard I, that's of not, that. That's not mine. I, <laughs> I didn't come up with that right now. But that's uh, great. It is, it is a good one. So this is one of the matchups where Storm goes slow. And we've seen, I think the first time we saw Paul Muller win an open with this, he had a great semifinal match where he was able to do this. Mm -hmm. um, the idea that Storm wants to combo as late in the game as possible. Right. And against King Landra was pretty important for the strategy. Yeah, and against Jeskai, that means we might, instead of that turn three or four win, we might see Paul go for turn seven or turn mm -hmm. eight. And especially because it's a Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix matchup, you don't just want to expose Baral or Electromancer on the second turn of the game. Yeah, well, Baral and Electromancer don't even matter too much in this matchup because Kazu has so much removal. They're mm -hmm. going to die. I imagine when Paul sees them off something like Serum Visions, he'll scry them all to the bottom in favor of lands. Right. If you have multiple uh, rituals, if you get to a threshold where you, say, have five lands on the battlefield, you cast a Baral or Electromancer, then Kazu is going to be forced to do something if you start casting rituals. Yep. And you up the storm count a little bit because you get a lightning bolt out of uh, Kazu's hand there. Double top on the scry for Paul. Do you think... In the dark with these players, Paul was on the play. Does he know what Kazu's playing would be your guess? I think that these two players, they, they, they talk. Okay. You know? These are pretty regular right. players on the tournament. I wouldn't be surprised if he just knew from talking to Kazu. Okay. And I guess he was on the draw, but it was a, a scalding tarn from Kazu, so it could have been a couple scalding of decks. Scalding tarn opens up a lot of universes. I know that Kazu was playing this foil Jeskai deck at the Invitational. I assume Paul knew that. Sure. On the line of snow-covered basics, which we saw from Todd Anderson, Paul Muller doing it too. I've been told that sometimes you can gifts on given and find two kinds of islands. No one does that. I, I, I've never seen it, but I, I've been told it can matter. Paul's doing it. He's got a 2-2 two -two split. I'm skeptical myself, but it's pretty free to do it. Opt and step from Paul. So, Ryan, what are the list of car What are the cards that Kazu has that interact here? You have those two main decks, Spell Snares. Those are really good against Rituals and Mana Creatures. There's Three Logic Knot. These ones are pretty expensive and relatively easy for Muller to go off to uh, through, but Kazu has four Cryptic Command as well. Then you have your removal spells to fight over Mana Creatures, depending how the mana shakes up, what the texture of a turn looks like. We'll see. Paul has an opportunity to do something here. End step, Kazu went for Field of Ruin. Now, Paul floated a mana in response. If he wanted to try to do something fancy like Ritual Gifts here, he has the mana for it. I, I Based on how he plays the matchup, I'd be surprised, but he has a window. If you're relatively confident that you can resolve your gifts, it's worth a Ritual to do that, especially because your combo turn in this matchup, as you are saying, it's not hinging on Baral Electromancer. It's hinging on Past and Flames. So having the Ritual in your graveyard is just fine, as long as you have enough to go off later. Yeah. Paul does not take the opportunity. Let's Kazu untap lands. And now we'll see Search for Ascanta from Kazu. He's left up double blue. Paul will remand. I, I don't think Kazu in good faith can recast it here. No, you don't want to tap low against a Storm Pilot, potentially going up to four mana off of lands alone. I do like Search as a win, as the win con for Kazu, though, because Paul's going to just try to make land drops. So if Kazu's going to get to a point where, say that Search resolves, then he just transforms it, says go, and starts finding more spell snares. I'm pretty into that. Right. Um, you... First of all, transform it to a land, so you can press a mana Great. advantage. Second of all, the search for his Kanta, it, it keeps the cards coming. You can just activate and lightning bolt on Paul's end steps, and yeah. eventually you'll reduce his life total to zero. You can invest very little mana at sorcery speed, if you invest any at all, and just kind of slowly take the game. So the question now I have, Ryan, is, is it time? So Kazu has tapped down to two mana instead of four. This is a window for Paul, especially if he doesn't have another remand, you know, He's not going to get Kazu much lower on mana, and he starts with Pyretic Ritual. This 
This is a really interesting start for Paul. Does Kazu fight? He's got a logic knot you see at the front of his hand. Let's see. Generally, you only see grape shots as uh, main deck win position. I always like to check for empty the warrants. Nobody plays that anymore. Kazu's going to tap out. He decides to fight over logic knot. And K Paul passes the turn with no land drop. No land drop is a good sign for Kazu. And it's interesting that Paul doesn't have a land drop. Remember, Serum Vision scryed both to the top. That opt was a scry to the top and draw. Paul had the ability to try to get more lands. Yeah. So his cards must still be good. You do need to hit a certain threshold of rituals. It's yeah. hard to scry through things like Mana Morphos, as you frequently want to have access to that. Though I will say on the previous turn, leading on Mana Morphos would have made a lot of sense over the Pyretic Ritual. Here is Sertoret's Kanta. Kazu passes with three up. He's got a Spell Snare at the front of his hand. Paul goes for Baral. Now, I don't... Kazu Spell Snares, and I'm actually okay with this on Paul's side. It's going to make it tough for Paul to go for an actual combo on this turn because it was Spell Snare and not Lightning Bolt. Yeah. You diminish Paul's access to mana. Yeah, it, you know, but he got he got a premium counter spell. What would have really, I think, he wouldn't have liked is if, say, Kazu had untapped and Supreme Verdicted or well, it depends something if like light, if like Lightning Helix hit it. It depends if Paul has a combo light rolled up. It's actually very good that Kazu had Spell Snare. Uh, against Paul's best hands, that's Kazu's best card. He wants to spend the Spell Snare there. Okay. Kazu up to six lands in play. His Graveyard's only at three cards because he had to delve for that Logic Knot. And now we see Paul going for a Noxious Revival. It looks like he's targeting Baral. Upkeep storms at one, I believe, is what we're doing. That's the right time to do it. He'll draw the Chief of Compliance, recast it. Logic Knot and Cryptic Command, both in Kazu's hand. And yeah, being able to fight with two counter spells here. Well, I'm is saying, really does good. he have? Yeah, he does have five blue mana. He'd need five for both of them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just basic planes for non-blue right. sources there. Right, I had to have to check there because that's a lot of a big ask of your mana to cast both those. Mm -hmm. He's already been through the field rune. There's not a ton of non-blue sources, but they are in the deck. And we're gonna see cryptic command on Baral. Kazu. Looks like he's pulling ahead. And so the, the logic not as tense because frequently in these matchups, it's very inviting if Muller has a remand to remand his own Baral. Yeah. Because Negri's at the ready with the logic not, he just gets to win the counter war entirely. Mana Morphos in response. Now, I don't know if Kazu fights over this. I don't think so. Right. You don't fight over that, and it also looks like Paul's trying to draw into the remand, which you do want to fight over. Right. Now, the more he delves to Logic Knot, the farther away as Kanta gets. Mm -hmm. Even the filtering every turn can be meaningful. He has stuff that yeah. he wants to get through in this matchup. You know, the Path to Exiles, they don't really play. The Supreme Verdict, you can, you can bin that. Probably yeah. don't want to be casting Teferi, d d depending how the hand shakes, shapes up. What I like is that in this matchup, Kazu generally can't win with a Colonnade. It's just... Too much of a mana, too dangerous. He has to win with lightning bolts. So if he's going to do that, the card advantage that his Kanta brings is really important. Mm -hmm. What Paul is doing, lets his Baral get countered, now makes Goblin Electromancer. Will that earn a logic knot? We'll see. It depends what Kazu's leftovers are. He's light on cards in hand. If you don't have a lightning bolt or a lightning helix, you probably have to go for a counter spell. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Now, if you do have a removal spell because Paul had tapped out this turn, I don't mind. Like I said, even if there was a, say there was a Supreme Verdict in Kazu's hand, a bad card, I would be really tempted to untap and Verdict to this Electromancer. Yeah, and he'd still have Logic not back up with that line. Yeah, and you know, be like, hey, I could just converted this miserable card. Mm -hmm. And you got to fight through some resources here. You know, Mulder went down a card off the Noxious Revival. You got the counter draw off the Baral. So you're pulling ahead on yeah. resources, so it's probably true that the Logic Knot will be enough on the following turn. Search for Ascanta, getting close. Six cards now in Kazu's graveyard. And he flipped past a Serum Visions, which strongly suggests that he has plans for his mana here. It just says go, so no, no verdict. Paul untaps, draws up to five in hand. Now will see if he can make a go. And, yeah, it's going to be time. Desperate Ritual starting out. Spell number one. See, Kazu, we know has a Logic Knot. It looks like he has a Snapcaster Mage as well. 
Yeah, that has access to Spell Snare. You could also go for Cryptic Command, but that would turn you off of casting the Logic Knot in the hand. Yeah, it's just seven mana right. instead of eight. Snapcaster Spell Snare plus Logic Knot is a pretty good wall of defense against the Storm deck. Certainly in game one, where you're not going to get hit yeah. by an empty of the Warrens. Two more. Oh, Desperate Ritual, Splicing Desperate Ritual for Paul. And that might be an inviting time to attempt a Spell Snare, Ryan. The or was, one that, was he splicing it? Actually, look. Yeah. The one, the one thing that's tough about it, it still has CMC2, but then Paul just has Ritual left over. There's not a ton that you can fight over with, with Spell Snare, and it is a lot of mana. Yeah. My issue would be if you let him resolve this, because so much mana, your Logic Knot actually yeah. starts becoming a bad card. Right, you do have to make sure that uh, Muller does not get out of range of <laughs> casting Cast in Flames and actually just paying, paying for, for your logic however knot? many cards you have in your graveyard. Yeah, normally that's not a concern, but that's a lot of mana. Yeah. And he does go for the Snapcaster Spell Snare play. Paul will keep going. Remember, spell Snapcaster adds two Storm. That is true. Here is that third Desperate Ritual. Just two cards in hand for Muller, though. Passed in flames. Two mana up. The Logic Knot should have this covered. I assume he has to Logic Knot this, right? We can't, we can't let this happen? No. You would have to be able to fight over multiple things from the point of it resolving to let it resolve, and that seems pointless. With only one card left in Paul's hand, it's not like there's Kazu's fearing anything threatening here. Mm -hmm. And he will Logic Knot. Uh, one mana floating, one land untapped. Kazu has to pay at least X equals three. Mm -hmm. and, and Kazu did use all of his lands available and just take one card of the graveyard, keeps yeah. uh, working towards that search for Ascanta transformation. Yeah, well, he has six. He should get it here. He has six, and this should be seven if he flips it over. Paul, out of cards, made a second Goblin Electromancer. That means that it's only three to flash back the past in flames, and there's a graveyard right. pretty full of rituals right now. Yeah, Kazu has to find... Another counter spell. This would be a great window for Supreme Verdict. <laughs> yeah. Do you main phase your Ascanta activation to try to find it? If I'm empty, probably, just because that's another card that I can hit. It's so strange in this matchup to think I'm, I'm trying to find my Supreme Verdict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably doesn't come up too often. He'll pass. One card in hand. Now, if you just have a cryptic command, that means that if the he already has it, is a non-issue. Yeah. Pyretic Ritual from Paul. And this, this is going to be the last window for Paul. Yeah. You can't really keep fighting once Kazu's transformed to search, starts activating as Kanta the Sunken Rune. Really easy to find counter spells. Really easy to close the game. Activate as Kanta. Now, if Kazu finds a verdict here, I'm going to say you missed opportunity. I think uh, there's a Serum Visions. Serum Visions passed to exile good. two lands. E yeah, even if a, a Serum Visions is the it's only It's still a sorcery. That's we an argument for main phasing it. Yeah, it still feels like he should have main phased here. Now, might not have mattered. There's only one redraw at this point. He yeah. didn't find something great. Maybe his last card is just good, too. I don't know. <laughs> the last card is the Cryptic. Right. <laughs> None of this matters. Secure the Wastes. It wasn't passed to exile, so it was Secure the Wastes. That's not going to be good enough. No. And Paul may have gotten it. Well, we haven't seen a Gifts Ungiven yet, right? So we have a bunch of Rituals. Uh, yes, Serum Visions. There's some redraws for Muller. Yeah, there's not that many Mana There's no Mana in there either. He just has a stack of, of red mana. I think there's one Mana Morphos. He, he baited when the okay. Command was on the stack. Yeah, he's got to find... Oh, I mean, really, a Mana would be good enough. Or a, he might even be at enough mana that a Grape Shot could... Get yeah, him there. Uh, Kazu is at 13. There's been some shock land activations. Draw two scries for Paul. Top bottom. You don't want to see that if you're Kazu. Top is concerning. Now it's time for Mana Morphos to make two blue. Draw that card that Paul scried to the top. This, And there's the sp oh, last card in Kazu's hand was Spell Snare. All right. Wait, wait. He can remand the... Sp he can remand his own man. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's still gone. He has opt left, though. Can draw that card he wanted. Right. When you're flashing back a spell, remanding it is just a redraw. Because the spell is now templated right. where it's exiled it's ex if it would go anywhere. Okay. You can't remand it back into your graveyard. Right. It's not. 
<laughs> it feels like that's how it should work, but it's not. That would be mighty powerful. Paul's still going for more rituals here. Up to Storm of Eight. He can storm, it looks like in his graveyard, pretty high. Mana Morphos, I imagine that's what he scried to the top. That's, that's out of his hand. That's you almost always want in this deck. Yeah, now I see him separating the graveyard. The Mana Morphos does not have flashback, is what he's showing. From here, he gets some uh, fancy redraws as he opens up the ability to cast some spell in the graveyard and then use the remand just to draw a card. Noxious Revival putting, man, um, putting Remand on top of his deck. I think he's casting it and just remanding it because it's the worst spell and he's not going to be oh, able to okay. do anything with so it. Oh, okay. So he's converting his Remand into a draw? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. If he finds a Grape Shot, he won't need to Noxious it here. It's already lethal. So your man says Noxious Revival. Draws. Did he Brick? Tapped land. And he just says go. He didn't find the win, Ryan. And that... That might just do it for Kazu. Mm -hmm. A shields down moment, and a big one at that for Kazu, but Paul cannot convert. Right. And remember, Kazu did find Settle the Wreckage uh, for the, of the Escanta in the previous turn, so Kazu will be turning the corner pretty quick, quickly from here. Yeah, well, and, on, and on top of that, Caleb, Paul just doesn't have much going on. Apologies there. Mm -hmm. uh, Escanta finds Lightning Bolt for Negri. I wouldn't even mind just he bolts away another kind of answer. Just a giant secure the waste on the end step there. Mm -hmm. I like activating the Escanta just because making sure you, you have a counter spell if Muller is able to pull something off. Starts hitting with the Snapcaster. Muller's graveyard still reasonably stocked. You see there's still a couple rituals. There's a Manamorphos down there. And they, they do play two past in flames. Now I like this from Kazu, the main phase Escanta have to exile. Not, no real need on that one. Not ideal. Says go. Let's Paul draw. And then he'll pass during draw step. Hoping to run Paul out of basics. Yeah, just getting the Electromancer off the table. The Storm deck is pretty heavy on basics. Kazu knows that. Yeah, it's got five, I believe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, Caleb's going to grab another. Or Paul. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wrong Storm player. Paul will get a island. I'd say I've never seen them in the same place at the same time, but that's just not true. They're almost always in the same place at the same time. It's just the family resemblance. <laughs> yeah, they have become quite good friends you know, off of their mutual appreciation for You know, Storm. Ryan, I get to check off Storm count of eight on my bingo board right now. It's interesting because I'm not sure Paul will win. But the storm true. count of eight did happen. Yeah, I got countered off cryptic command while we're checking squares. Baral recast by Paul, but he's still passing the turn. And now here's secure the waste. It's only for four from Kazu. It still won't take long to close. If there's a removal spell available for the brawl in the following turn, it's just a two-turn clock. Right. Even without there, without that. There's a lot of cards that make it easy to do it in three. Yeah, and with Ezkanta going, you assume he'll find one of them. Mm -hmm. Abe Lightning Bolt or a Lightning Helix should be available. Even Path to Exile, pretty reasonable from here. So the tokens are there. We're figuring out a way to get them on the battlefield. There we go. Bolt on the Baral. Attack for six, drops Paul to six. He's got one more shot. Will pass, can Paul hit? Only card you Don't really have there is so. Cast in Flames, and I think it's not even deterministic. Two lands aren't going to do it. Kazu Negri takes game one with Just Guy Control. That's a game that you don't always see them win here. Yeah, uh, the Spell Snare is definitely coming in clutch. Yeah. An underappreciated card in the modern format. I might Do you be have opinions on, on this one? I might, be, I might be a little too big on it. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and look at the sideboards. So on Paul's side, I've seen him play as one before, and he's got a pretty big sideboard for the matchup. Four pieces of the puzzle and two Pyromancer Ascension are generally the backbone of what you see here. Right. Yeah, the pieces of the puzzle, just another card advantage piece, is really powerful. You can reach for Empty the Warrens and check Kazu on having a sweeper. This is the three-color good stuff deck where the empty tends to be good the least often. So you, 
you know, Kazu is likely to have access to engineer explosives in three game sets, and then Supreme Verdict likely sticking around as a one of, or it's either there or it's not, but it is a problem if it is there. But Empty is the easiest thing to squeak through a counter spell turn. The rest of the stuff doesn't really play. You don't really expect Jeskai to be attacking you with permanence, so the bounce spells don't really play. You don't care about something like Echoing Truth. I mean, you just saw Secure the Wastes, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not, that's not where you want to be fighting. That's so deep in the game. You're, you're the aggressor. Having an answer to Secure the Wastes is just not at all where you want to be. Well, just around the corner is Magic's next set. The core set is back, and it's Core Set 2019. It's been a year since we've seen one of these. But you can pre-order them now today from StarCityGames.com. They will not ship until July 13th, as that's when the set released. But you can get singles. Foils, booster boxes, bundles, and more. And can actually just pre-order the singles, and they will be guaranteed over on our website. So find out that in our previews at StarCityGames.com slash previews. I want to get my hands on that new nickel bolus. There's a card against Storm, Ryan. It's an amulet. Amulet of amulet of good against Storm. Ugh. That card. I think that's what the text is. It's amulet of, of anti-Storm. Right. It's just actually worse against Storm than Damping Sphere is. I think just to drive home the point that it's good against Storm, you should have named like Amulet of Rainbows. Because, you know, when a storm's over... Oh, that's the end of a, end of a also storm. Also, have a great... It's an end of, yeah, you got to have a great name for it. That's I, really I, a, I a think, nice one. I think that given how <laughs> inelegant the, the design is in the first place, you should just call it, like, weather-controlling device. <laughs> just, like, something that really hammers you. Just clubs you over the head. This is what this card does. <laughs> So, on Kazu's side with sideboarding, he's got some dead cards to get rid of. I don't think he wants Path to Exiles anymore. I'm pretty excited about Dispel. I'm excited about Negate. I like Vendillion Click. Um, how much burn does he actually have to keep in here as he starts boarding in all these blue cards? I think Lightning, Hulk's, Lightning Helix is a little bit mophy. I at least want to shave on that. But Lightning Bolts definitely play. Just killing Electromancer and Brawl is really good. Um, a, a card that's really good in the, the sideboard here is Ruined Halo, just aiming Grape Shot. That, that, yeah. that, that's something that maybe Muller does need to reach for a bounce spell if that, that's a plan that we're expecting to see happen here. Do you think Engineered Explosives comes in just in case of Empty the Warrens? I think it makes sense to have access to one kind of sweeper effect. Okay. You don't want to leave yourself just cold to it. What about Disdainful Stroke? The only thing it counters is Past in Flames, but that's a pretty big thing to counter. It counters Gifts Ungiven as well. Okay, so with two copies, it's probably worth its time. It hits some pretty big things, and those spells are so important that I am interested in it. Yeah, a lot of great cards here. Now, if the Pyromancer Ascension plan is well known, we could see Celestial Purge, but that's pretty narrow. Right. And that's another spot where explosives can pay off, too. So maybe you just start with explosives and then see what happens from there. Yeah. Both players keeping on seven here for our second game. Remember, Paul's deck with access to pieces of the puzzle post-board. Really does change how the matchups play. No Electromancer, no Ascension. He'll just pass on two mana. Don't want to get Spell Snared. You can't play around one mana cards, though. Like, I noticed that playing in Spell Snare. What, am I going to wait until you tap out? He's, Kazu's just not going to do it. It's mm, a good strategy. That's why one mana cards, and especially zero mana cards, are nice. Yeah, casting spells that don't cost mana. Like, how do out. I play around? What? I wait till you don't have your mana up. It's not a thing. You wait until you can cast multiple spells in a turn. You can you can ta tax Kazu's mana. One one is not free. It is very cheap. Though I, I don't think that's what's happening. If there's an Electromancer or a Brawl, you're waiting because you want to be able to cast multiple spells in the turn in the first place, and you're pretty yeah. weak to Lightning Bolt. Serum Visions from Kazu. Still has that mana up for a possible spell snare. Now on three, we'll see Paul. Is it a mana creature? Is it an ascension? This mana looked like it might have been Baral, but now we're looking at pieces. I like this. This real. If you want to talk about player on spell snare, Paul's play is great here. Top five gets two instants or sorceries, puts the rest in the graveyard, and you see that he was worried he was only going to get one. Yeah, just barely. Yeah, there's that second card. Uh, opt or serum visions plus side of hand. Yeah, two cantrips. He'll turn those into relevant cards later. Bins both his basic islands, so he no longer can do the snow-covered island island gift split. Oh, no. Yeah, it's off the board. That's so fundamental to his strategy. I don't know how he's going to recover. 
Here's a sleight of hand that he'd found. We'll start with that. Picks up a grape shot with it. Here's the serum visions he found. I'm not sure if I see a second land in Paul's hand. And you, or sorry, fourth land. Well, he milled over three of them. Yeah. You do want to make land drops in this matchup. Giga Drows and something else in those top two. He's going to keep one of them on top of the deck. Giga Drows is not bad here. Looks like he'll use a mana to cast another serum vision. So he'll draw the card he topped, and there's the land. I think they're both lands. But you're right, Ryan, that he doesn't have one this turn. That means he'll have to discard, I think, to pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, this looks like it's an eight-card hand. Both top, but yeah, moves to discard. Lands will resume next turn. So Vendillion click on end step from Kazu. Doesn't, he doesn't know who he's targeting, though. Says, hold on. Yeah, and then he says, okay, I'm targeting Paul. Eight card hand is Giga Drows, Baral, Grape Shot, Repeal, Baral, Wipe Away, two Desperate Rituals. So a lot of board cards here. We have two, two bounce spells, two mana creatures, a Giga Drows, a Grape Shot, and two Rituals. This uh, configuration looks like Muller is paying respect to those ruined halos. Yeah. I will say a Vendillion Click is generally not super effective against an eight card hand. There's just so many ways that the elements here can come together and assemble a combination. The Giga Drouse is probably the scariest card and you wouldn't expect multiple yeah. copies of that. It's the most unique here. It's the one that Kazu's hand might not be able to beat. Right. It's the one that makes it so hard to fight a counter war. I guess on Paul's side we'll see him discard that second Baral. Most likely. And Giga Drows, of course, has the ability to just tap out Kazu. Paul actually discards the repeal. He keeps both Baral's. The redundant bounce spells, they don't do a ton. It is definitely true that Baral does just go to the graveyard really quick in this matchup. So having yeah. the backup can pay dividends. Pass. Now Paul with two lands in hand, one off that click and one off the draw for the turn. And disguising that he's had a land, I don't think Kazu's buying it. He'll start with a Baral. Paul kept double topped on a Serum Visions. At least one of them has to be a land. Turns out both of them are. Well, Kazu knows most of the hand. I mean, based off of what he knows, Paul's not on a combo turn here. So Fighting over the second it? spell is probably good too. So Paul will mini Grape Shot here, one and one, or maybe double at the click. And then he'll play a tap land past the turn. I like how Paul's playing this. Yeah, he's shaping up to fight a long game, which you kind of have to do in this matchup. And yeah, when, you, when you're making your land drops and you're putting pressure now on Kazu to keep up in his land drops and also have enough disruptive elements. He'll keep pace. Kazu will just bolt down the Brawl on end step. Back over to Negri. Fifth land. Are we going to see a Teferi? We are going to see Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. This is the big, the big turn. Kazu draws, untaps two. If he can survive to the untap, he's in a great spot. And he knows most of Muller's hands. He's leaving up yeah. either Logic Knot or Spell Snare here, at least representing those. I like, I like Kazu making this the turn. Here's Baral from Muller. Spell Snare from Negri. One more mana to work with. And yeah, this is that second Baral that Negri knew about. Muller can't convert too much if this counter spell goes off. And if he fights over it, it means he's using most of his mana anyway. Yeah. He could have a remand, pick up that Baral, but he's not comboing from there. Doesn't have enough mana to even recast the Baral. It's just not a great spot no matter which, which way you look at it for Paul Muller. If he lets it get countered and doesn't fight this turn, then he's going to have to win through a Teferi. It's two cards a turn for Kazu and his win condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's two cards a turn. It also generates a mana advantage. If Negri has some Serum Visions, starts yeah. looking for something specific, he can cast that, use the Teferi to draw the card he wants that turn, get it left on top of the Serum Visions, and then just untap the mana. So Paul is remanding his own Baral. 
And Ryan, I actually, if I'm in Kazu's spot, just am fine with all this happening. Paul's tapped out. Yes, Paul got to two for one you, but Teferi's going to two for one him back. You're fine with this exchange, but if Kazu has a dispel, this is a good fight to pick. Okay, and he does have the dispel, so he'll just trade all the cards. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to leave the Storm player with many cards in hand. Yeah, I think, and you look at Kazu's hand, it's two Snapcaster Mages. If that's the case, I mean, yes, keep fighting. Get a, get a dispel in your graveyard. It's basically the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, th the remand on the Brawl is just a positive exchange for Muller. Yeah. If you can minimize positive exchanges, you pull further and further ahead. No land six for Kazu, to, even after the Teferi. If he wants to just put a Snapcaster in play, or maybe you snap a Serum Visions, he can. I think he will. Remember, he'll get to untap two of these lands, so it's not a big, big cost. Top bottom on the scry. We'll see if he picked up the land. Yeah, there's some slight tension in casting to Fairy in the matchup, but once you start on tapping with it, you were just so far ahead. And especially because of the Vendillion click, Kazu knew most of what could have happened on the following turn. Still no land for Kazu. We go back over to Muller. Kazu has four mana up, Snapcaster Mage in hand. Spell Snare and Dispel are his best options. Things are getting dangerous for Paul. Yeah, Spell Snare makes it so Paul really can't set up with the mana creature. Just get to spell that before it comes down. Dispel makes it so Paul can't execute a gift on Given. And it looks like we're going to see during Kazu's draw step, Paul has an action. It's going to be wipe away on the Teferi. Kazu picks it up. Swings for two. I don't know if he'll recast the Teferi. That's dicey here. Plays land six. Depends what he has for backup interaction. Obviously leaving up more mana will temper Paul's plays, yeah. but if all you have is a Snapcaster Dispel, shoving there is pretty reasonable. Yeah, you'd hate to have it get remanded and then you lose. Yeah. His hand is so full though, he has to have multiple points of interaction. Yeah, I agree. We see another Snapcaster Mage end step. He'll flash back Lightning Bolt. That All is to a 11. strong showing of confidence. Yeah, if you can use your Snapcaster Mages that way, mm -hmm. that means that he believes he has extra controls that he can get rid of one of them for more clock. And on the table, this is a three-turn clock. Any additional Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix makes it two. This one is looking like it's going Kazu's way. Paul will get two more draws. Try to find something. Yeah, for the Storm player, that lightning bolt either means, oh no, <laughs> I'm very dead, or my opponent has made a mistake and maybe I can win from this. Yeah, the attack puts Paul down to seven. So one more lightning bolt plus an attack next turn will be enough. Both players are aware of this. I mean, look at Kazu's hand. He's got a third Snapcaster Mage, a Cryptic Command, and seven mana total, so Cryptic, Snap, Dispel are up. I don't, I don't know that Paul will be able to get through that. Mm -hmm. You also have the option. I guess there's no burn spell in the graveyard, so you can't right. like Cryptic to pick up a Snapcaster Mage or anything like that. But you can fight more wars. Right. Yeah, I don't know if Kazu has a way to close on the next attack, but he may not need to. He has so much counter magic. Mm -hmm. There's also a Path to Exile hanging out in that hand. Sure. Could answer a mana creature. Pyromancer Ascension. This is the card out of the sideboard for Paul Muller. A very powerful card in the matchup, but it's shown up late to this game and may not end up mattering. Given that Kazu, without a burn spell, does not have a win yet, it seems worth fighting over the Ascension. You can just Cryptic Bounce it at the end step if you are concerned about it. Grape Shot. Counter on Pyromancer Ascension. One and one targeting both Snapcaster mages. And Ryan, I think this board state is why I might agree with you that I wouldn't have minded Snapcaster Spell Snare mm -hmm. on the Ascension. Yeah, the uh, Snapcaster Lightning Bolt is extremely aggressive on the previous turn. If you still maintain that, uh, Kazu has enough resources where it seems like he is still fine. He's going to 
counter the Grape Shot targeting one Snapcaster Mage and bounce the other Snapcaster. It looked like he bounced Drew, and now he can Snapcaster. Oh, okay. So, so he, yeah, it was bounce draw. Apologies. And use so. the spell snare on the grape shot on the other. Okay, that that explains. So, bounce draw with the, the cryptic, and then Snapcaster to protect the other one. A neat line there that Kazi found to protect his clock. He hits Paul down to three. That cryptic command card is fancy. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Eighth land for Negri. And it looks like Celestial Purge did come out of the board. It exiles the Ascension, and that makes sense as to why we didn't counter it. We already had it covered. Yep. Last turn for Paul. This should be it. And it looks like in the battle of our players, of our, our top 16 battle here in round three, Kazu Negri may be coming out on top. He's very far ahead and even has a game to give. Going for a spliced ritual here. Threatens to make six mana. It's the kind of thing that sets up for a past in flames, but uh, Kazu can just sit back on his counter spells, wait for the actual past in flames to materialize. Okay. In order to fight through that, Mother would need enough, enough mana to pass in flames, flash back past in flames through a counter spell, and then still have mana left over to start casting rituals. So looking at 11 mana, I yeah. think. Yeah, right. And he's just not at that threshold yet. He doesn't have enough cards in hand to really put him there. So he has the Past in Flames. There's a counter spell. It looks like Disdainful Stroke, and that's going to do it. Kazu Negri takes down the match 2-0 against Paul Muller. Well, congratulations there. Jeskai Control coming out on top. This is one of those matchups, though, that very interesting from both sides. And 